So for this week's pre-lab video, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to splice together a couple different videos, some of which are uh, older, uh, previously recorded. And in the first segment that I'm about to show you, I'm going to uh, refer to having already read through the lab instructions. Um, I don't expect you to do that in advance. I think you'll get the idea just from uh, listening to what I'm going to explain in that segment. So without further ado, I'll let my myself of one year ago take it away. Okay, so from the lab handout, hopefully you've gathered that the purpose of this lab is to examine both um, acclimation and acute responses of crayfish to um, environments that vary in their salinity. So the original goal of this experiment was to first take a bunch of crayfish and then acclimate them to uh, salinities that range from 0% up to 2.5%. And then uh, we're going to take water samples and measure the uh, salt levels both in the water sample and in the crayfish itself at each of these different under each of these different acclimation conditions. Then we're also going to set up a test of uh, crayfish acute responses to salinity. So we're going to take crayfish that were originally acclimated at either 0% or at 2% salinity, and we're going to expose them to a change in conditions. So the 0% crayfish we're going to get exposed to 2% salinity, and then the 2% uh, crayfish are going to get exposed either to 0% or to 3% salinity. And then we're going to track a couple of characteristics uh, through time. So their body mass and then changes in sodium and chloride content. And on um, uh, so uh, for salt conditions, we're not working with um, just table salt here. So these crayfish Last year, we were acclimated using a, a salt mix called Instant Ocean. Um, so it's obviously configured to be very similar to salt levels that are in the ocean. So when Instant Ocean is prepared at a total uh, concentration of 3.5%, so that's 3.5 grams per liter, um, here's what you wind up getting in terms of uh, the percentages of all these different ions. So uh, if we want to track what's happening with sodium and chloride individually, uh, we have to measure each ion individually as well. All right, thank you, past self. That was really informative. Uh, so for uh, quantifying our individual ions, specifically we're going to focus on sodium and chloride. Uh, for chloride, what we're going to do is we're going to use a chlorodometer instrument, and that functions by a titration process. And I'm going to let an old school video explain that titration process to you. It's pretty fun. And then for sodium, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use a little uh, sodium meter here. Um, and uh, so the sodium meter just looks like this. And I'm going to walk you through uh, what's involved in calibrating and using that to quantify sodium. All right, so here is my sodium meter. And the first thing I need to do is run through a calibration procedure with it. And these come with a little instruction manual that's got sort of uh, pictographs for uh, how to do the calibration. Uh, but sometimes just seeing it demonstrated is a lot better than uh, trying to interpret the hieroglyphics. So uh, these sodium meters, uh, the way they work is uh, they have got a little compartment here on the left hand side. Uh, and this little compartment, you can access it by sliding this little cover open or the entire thing flips up. And I think that winds up being a lot easier to work with. You're just going to turn it on with the on off switch. And it just told me it's a sodium 11 meter. Uh, and then uh, to run through the calibration process, we're going to start off on um, the kits will contain uh, two solutions that are already prepared for us. Um, either at 150 parts per million or 2,000 parts per million. Uh, and uh, we'll translate this into percentages. So uh, we'll start out with 150 parts per million. Uh, and what you need to be sure of when you're doing this is we need enough liquid in this chamber uh, to connect across uh, these two contact points here, because this is basically just an electrode that's going to measure uh, voltage production. So I'm going to squirt in some liquid enough to cover, give that a little shaky shake. Then I'm going to close this cover and I'm going to push the cowl button. And uh, you notice when I close the cover I get a little happy face uh, to say that I have a stable reading at this point. So I'm going to press the cowl button and it's going to ask are you meaning to calibrate at 150 parts per million? And I am, so I'm going to press cowl again. A little bit longer. 
and then it's going to show me a happy face to show, okay, now it's calibrated uh, at 150 parts per million. Um, then I need to clean this solution out. So to do that, I'm going to take some deionized water here, uh, and I'm going to uh, use a little beaker. I'm going to just dump out that initial solution, and I'm going to rinse off the electrode with the uh, DI water. Okay, get rid of that. Now we're ready to calibrate with the uh, higher salinity solution, so 2,000 uh, parts per million. Squirt that in. Give a little shaky shake. Okay, close the sensor. It's already reading 2,000 parts per million, so that's promising. Uh, but I'm again, I'm going to press the cal button. And now it's flashing. It uh, just wants me to verify, do I mean 2,000? And I do, so I'll press again. And I'll wait. It's going to flash. It's got the happy sign. So it's happy. Calibrated 2,000 parts per million. So uh, and then it's just switched back now to measure mode. Uh, so it's ready to start measuring salinities. So when I'm ready to start measuring, I'm going to dump this out. Rinse it off again with a little more uh, deionized water. And then I recommend starting out on measuring the salinities of on um, the uh, water that the crayfish are living in, um, and then uh, transitioning over to measuring salinities for, uh, or sodium concentrations for the crayfish hemolymph samples, because uh, there's a little bit of a learning curve with sampling out the crayfish hemolymph. All right, so that's measuring sodium. So now the question is, how do you actually get hemolymph out of a crayfish? And to start off with, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is blot off your crayfish so that you're not just measuring the water that the crayfish was living in. And a couple notes on uh, handling these guys. Um, usually if you grab them uh, towards the back of the carapace, um, they can't get you with their claws. Uh, and then along with that, um, sometimes you can hand them something like a Kim wipe uh, to be angry at. Uh, and then that, what that'll let you do is it'll let you get in to blot off their tails. So here's my crayfish. I am going to, and at this point I've actually blotted this crayfish off so its underside is dry. If you don't do that, oftentimes on um, when you try to sample the hemolymph, the, uh, the blood will not pool in a way where it's easy to get. And I've got a little uh, 26 gauge needle here. So then on the underside, sometimes your crayfish may kind of tuck its tail up. Uh, so you just want to hold the tail back. And then it has uh, soft points in its carapace on the underside here. So I'm just going to look for a soft point and I'm going to poke a little hole. And then I can actually see there's hemolymph running from that hole. And I'm going to hold my capillary tube where I put that puncture. And actually the blood at this point is now pooling up in the bottom of the tail. You want to hold your capillary tube horizontal at the edge. If you look really close you'll see that filling up with hemolymph from the crayfish. All right, thanks buddy. So now you might be wondering, once you've got your crayfish's uh, hemolymph into one of these capillary tubes, how do you get it out again? So uh, you should see a little um, squeezy bulb that looks like this, and it has an end where you can insert the end of your capillary tube. And if you just squeeze it, nothing's going to happen because there is an escape hole at the tip of this bulb. So you need to cover that escape hole uh, and then uh, get your capillary tube lined up. Um, and then you will be able to inject the uh, hemolymph into your sample tube. All right, now you have what you need to know to get underway with characterizing osmoregulation in crayfish.